Hey everyone, it's Mostly Casual Commander, I'm BK, and Kyle starts us off by playing an Undo Sky Ruins before passing the turn to Kovacs. He plays Mountain as his land for turn, and passes to Busterkins, who drops an island, and ships the turn over to me. I play a Swamp as my land for turn. Now, let's see who our players are, and what decks we're playing. Kyle won the dice roll, and he's playing Ishin, two heavens is one. He's looking to double up on attack triggers with this aggressive deck, sort of like Attack Harmonicon. Next up we have Kovacs playing Miram Sentinel Worm. He's looking to make copies of all of his super powerful dragons. Busterkins brought Millicent along with an army of spirits hoping to fly over his opponents and gently glide through them probably. And I brought Braids, or is a Nightmare, looking to sacrifice pretty much everything and drain out my opponents. We are on Discord, Patreon, and stick around for an appearance for my fat cat meatball. He's so chunky. Kyle played a Swamp as his land, followed by Cold Steel Heart, naming red as the color that he could tap for. Kovacs plays a Forest, and then he says go over to Busterkins, who drops a Plains as his land for turn, and follows that up by casting Haunted Library. When things of his opponents die, he can get spirits. That's sweet. I drop a Swamp, and then I cast Nether Trader. This thing's got haste and shadow and can come back from the dead. I'm like, Kovacs, I don't like your dragons, and drop him to 39. On to Kyle's turn, he plays Exotic Orchard as his land, and then he casts Hero of Bladehold, which I heard is pretty dece. Following that, he passes the turn back over to Kovacs, who plays an island as his land, and then he casts Urza's Incubator, naming Dragon and reducing the cost of all of his dragon spells. That's neat. On Busterkin's turn, he plays an island as his land, and then he casts Hanged Executioner, who has a buddy that comes along with him. It's a spirit, right there. It's a 1-1 one -one with flying. On to my turn, I drop an Ancient Tomb, and then I use that to help cast my commander at the expense of two life. So Braid's Arisen Nightmare hits my battlefield, and then I move into combat, swinging my Nether Trader at Kovacs, pinging him one, and then move to end step where Braid's triggers, I sacrifice Nether Trader, so each of my opponents either has to sack a creature or lose two life and I get to draw a card. Buster can sack one of his spirits, so I draw two. On Kyle's turn, he plays Boros Signet, and with that out, he'll cast his commander, Ishin, two heavens is one. Then he decides to go into combat, swinging with his Hero of Bladehold at Busterkins. This has two triggers, getting him four soldier tokens. He swings them at me, and I block one with braids, and I take a few points of life, as does Busterkins. The damage is dealt, a soldier dies, we clean up the board, and then in main phase two, Kyle plays Nomad Outpost as his land before passing over to Kovacs, who plays another forest as his land, and with that, he'll cast his commander, Miram, Sentinel Worm, allowing him to start making copies of dragons when they ETB. On to Busterkin's turn, he drops another Plains, and with that, he'll cast Ethereal Investigator. When it enters the battlefield, he'll generate three clue tokens. Hey, that'll let him draw cards. On my turn, I drop a Swamp, Swamp Drop, and follow that up by casting Grim Harrispex, hoping to get some value by drawing cards when my stuff dies. I cast Endless Atlas as a follow-up play, also allowing me to draw. I don't sacrifice anything on my end step which was probably a mistake. On Kyle's turn, he plays Big Score, getting two cards as well as two treasure tokens. And all he had to do was discard one card. Can you believe it? He drops a Swamp as his land for turn, and then he cracks some treasures, casting Cathar's Crusade, which is a, not a big deal. It's, it's fine, everything's fine. He moves into combat. So again, Ishin doubles up Hero of Blade holds triggers, and he gets four more soldier tokens entering the battlefield. This triggers Cathar's Crusade, and then he declares his attacks. He deals damage to all of us, because he's, he's so mean. I make the bold decision to take all of the damage, as opposed to chump blocking, because hey, I need my stuff so that I can try to actually do something. Am I right? So Kyle became enemy number one. I can hit him pretty hard. Any removal. No. I change these to treasures. <laughs> In this situation, I wish you could, Busterkins. Kovacs cast Rapacious Dragon, so when it ETBs, not only does it get copied thanks to Miram, but it also produces two treasure tokens. In this case, it's four, you know, because there's two of them. And using some of those treasures, Kovacs casts Hellkite Charger, and again, when that enters the battlefield, a copy of it is made. And with the last of his treasures, he casts Levon, Cultist of Tiamat, 
This also makes a copy, but because it's a legendary thing, it legend rules itself and dies. Kovex then moves into combat, punching Kyle in the face with his dragons, dropping him down to 22. He passes the turn to Busterkins, who has Dark Steel Mutation, which enchants the hero of Bladehold, hopefully stemming some of the bleeding. Onto my turn, I play Drownyard Temple, and then I bravely use my Ancient Tomb to activate my Endless Atlas, drawing a card, and I find a Plague Crafter. So I cast that, and everybody's got to sacrifice a creature. Kyle sacrifices a soldier. I kill my own Plague Crafter, getting a Grim Harrowspex trigger. One of Kovacs's dragons dies, and one of Busterkin's spirits dies. I then move into combat at Kyle, cracking him for six, and dropping him to 16. And I move to end step, triggering Braids. I sacrifice Braids herself. This also triggers Grim Harrowspex. And Busterkins also can make a spirit token thanks to Haunted Library. My opponents each take two, therefore I draw three cards from Braids and one more from Grim Harrowspex. I pass the turn after discarding, back over to Kyle, who plays a Braid, killing one of Kovacs' creatures. And then he casts Dockside Extortionist. This will generate him six whole treasure tokens, and when it enters the battlefield, it will also trigger Cathar's Crusade, therefore giving all of his creatures a plus one plus one counter. He forgets to put it on Dockside immediately, but catches that in just a moment. He moves into combat, swinging at Kovacs and I. Before damage, I cast Defile on the one soldier token that's attacking me. This doesn't kill it, but it shrinks it, and I only take one. Hanging in there, unfortunately, Kovacs gets knocked out of the game after being dealt enough damage. With that, Kyle in second main phase casts Valakut Awakening, so he'll put one card to the bottom of his library, and then he gets to draw two cards. Then he drops Inspiring Vantage, which of course enters the battlefield tapped. He casts Talisman of Conviction, and then he passes the turn over to Busterkins. He draws, and then he plays another island as his land for turn. And he follows that up by activating a clue, cracking it, and drawing. This will trigger his Ethereal Investigator, giving him another spirit token. He passes. I play Takanuma, Abandoned Mine. And then I activate Endless Atlas, again drawing a card and hoping to find some sort of answer to deal with Kyle. On Kyle's turn, he plays Esper Sentinel, not because he's going to exact much value other than the plus one plus one counters thanks to Cathar's Crusade. He moves into combat, swinging two creatures at me this time, and Busterkins chump blocks three of his creatures and Cyclonic Rifts one of the soldier tokens as well. Because the soldier doesn't bounce back to Kyle's hand, it just goes away. And speaking of going away, I too am going away. So I clean up my board, but Busterkins forgets to clean up his after blocks. These are all dead. No, it's fine. <laughs> these, are, these are all dead. That's fine. I was saying, oh dang, he survived that. Wow, that's block, crazy. I blocked them. I didn't say that they died. <laughs> they block, but also don't take damage. Yeah. So Busterkins cracks into a clue, drawing a card, and hoping that some sort of answer exists. He finds a midnight clock, which is great. And he passes the turn over to Kyle. And Kyle goes right into the red zone, smashing Busterkins with all of his attackers, knocking him out of the game. Congratulations, Kyle. That's an awesome, aggressive Ishin deck. As promised, here's Meatball. He's, uh, so fat. I love him. Well, that's the game. Kyle definitely got carried away really quickly with his aggressive deck. But what did you guys think of the game? Let us know what you thought about it in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching.